since then, there's some questions. And, Jay, that's the question, I think, tonight, is that both these teams have to show up and start to prove themselves all over again since that game. Both these teams have lost a little of their mojo, especially yeah. Gonzaga. And, you know, it's hard to believe a team as accomplished as, as Gonzaga has been, they're having a little bit of a crisis of confidence. And it's tough to find your confidence in an arena like Thompson Bowling when you're going against a team that's got a 37 home game winning streak. It's right. very difficult. Gonzaga is not a team that uh, sneaks up on people anymore. Let's face it, since Mark Few in his 10th season, nine straight years to the NCAA tournament, third most wins in school history. And Bruce Pearl on the other side has just revitalized Tennessee basketball from the men's standpoint. Coach Summit always had that with the women's games here. But it is a sold-out crowd. It's a vocal crowd on a cold night in Knoxville, and we're about set to warm it up right here. We're underway. Jism doesn't mind shooting outside, and he missed the opening. But it comes out to Tyler Smith, and they'll have another chance. Mays for three. Already two offensive rebounds for Tennessee, and that is going to be a big factor in this game. Tennessee, the best offensive rebounding team in the Southeastern Conference, and Gonzaga's got to keep them from getting second opportunities. Talk about having two open outside looks, and it's a nice pass underneath from Bolden to Heitfeld. Heitfeld just slipping that little screen there. That's going to be there because of the overplay from Tennessee. You know, ten Jimmy Dykes mentioned Tennessee finding their defensive identity. I think one thing they're going to have to do is they're going to have to dial their defense down a little bit, build a wall, and make people shoot over. Here's a wide open look for three from Bolden. And a rebound off to Mays, and he's going to hustle down and take it himself. Well, that's four straight misses on pretty good looks by Tennessee. Now, one of the problems Tennessee's got starting out is Gonzaga's getting way too many easy looks. They're guys that are wide open, including May, who got a pretty straight on look right there and drained it. Austin Day and his 4 0 Gonzaga. Austin Day has been struggling, especially over his last three games. He's not a player that's strong physically, but he is very, very skilled. Mays works the baseline straight up. That's twice he's missed in close. So Tennessee can't buy one here. 0 for 5 in the opening minute and a half. They've been struggling, Brad, from some bad starts. They got off to a really bad start against Kansas, but battled their way back with a chance really at 77-70 to get back in it. They lost that one by 7 in Lawrence in their last outing. And Gonzaga comes in with a three-game losing skid. So normally we're talking about these teams winning. Outlet pass by Chisholm. Cargo playing strong safety back there, knocked it away. Josh Heitfeld doing a good job of setting that screen and immediately rolling to the basket. Nobody picks him up on the roll, nobody rotates over. And that's a problem that Tennessee has had this season. They have not been a good defensive team. They're allowing 43% from the floor to the opposition. That's not going to work. They're first in the conference in the SEC in scoring. The bad news is. They're last in the SEC in points allowed. And the, the field goal percentage wouldn't be so horrible. I mean, it's bad at 43%, but if they were forcing a lot of turnovers, the problem is they're not forcing a lot of turnovers. Exactly. And they had way too many of their own the last time these two teams met. Chisholm had it blocked by either Day or Heitbell underneath. At any rate, it's out of bounds for the Volunteers. Well, Austin Day, just a sophomore, he is 6'10", long arms, leads this team in block shots. Inbound to Chisholm. Half hook, he walked with it before the shot. So last time they had 21 turnovers, they've got two here in the first two minutes and change. And Bruce Pearl just told his team, hey, get back and play defense. You know, this is not time to complain, it's time to knuckle down and play ball. And there's a backdoor cut by Heidbell. Great pass by Gray. That is way too easy. Chisholm lost view of man and ball, got above the line of his man and a terrific back cut by Josh Heitfeld. You know, the Bulldogs have completely taken the Thompson Bowling Arena crowd out of it here in the first couple minutes. Prince loses the handle, but it comes clean to Tyler Smith. Tennessee feels a little rushed right now. They need to take their time and get into something and really you know, get into their flex and get a good shot. Well, they got a good look at three. From Cameron Tatum, that's his 20th of the year. He's their top three-point shooter, not necessarily percentage, but in numbers. And he's got their first bucket. Cameron Tatum is great in 
game against Georgetown came in knocked some shots down especially in the second half and he's one of the guys that can help stretch the defense which there aren't many on this team no nope, they don't have a Chris Lofton. yeah they don't have a Chris Lofton anymore and foul on Wayne Chisholm his first now let's take a look at this here Wayne Chisholm you can see right here at the foul line now watch Josh Heitfeld he is right here now Heitfeld is going to go down set a little screen and then come back up when he does come back up you see Chisholm gets way up way too high loses sight of man and ball just an easy opportunity high bell at the free throw line 75 percent free throw shooter and he missed them both Quick first step on the baseline. Shot goes. Hate him again. That's one of the ways you don't have to go against a half court defense. And not a good decision by Jeremy Pargo. But if you beat it down the floor, you can get some easier opportunities. You don't have to grind it out all game long. Those so six straight for openers for Gonzaga, five straight for Tennessee. And now they got a chance to take the lead this trip. Zag has been playing a soft man. They are going to play a lot of zone in this game. Wolverine in the lineup for Tennessee. Tatum feeling it. Got it. Tennessee, their first lead. Brad, isn't it amazing when a shooter sees the ball go through once? Yep. All of a sudden, that confidence level rises. That basket gets so much bigger, and then you've got a real problem as a defender. You're guarding a confident shooter. Here's Pargo. Nice drive on the baseline, but he left it short. Tab will clear off the rebound. A nice hesitation move. Nobody came over from the other side. Excuse me, Tyler Smith just uh, threw it to the other side with Stephen Gray. Bolden going to get bumped in route. Foul will be on Josh Tab. Cameron Tatum. Balls are leaning on him from the outside, and they lead by two. Always difficult to beat down there, and I think Florida State has gotten off to a really good start in this season. Having a signature win over a team like Duke or Carolina is what they need to make the NCAA tournament. It's Matt Bolden's first points. Hey, you got it. You got it. 11 points above him. Now, Brad, anytime you've got a, a confidence problem and you're playing a team that presses, they're giving you an opportunity. And Gonzaga's got to have an attack mentality in this game and take advantage of that opportunity that pressing is going to give them. Tatum thought about it. Now he'll drive with the underhand scoop. He's got a good feeling about how things are going. Now, considering he scored every point, and I'm not sure that <laughs> Tennessee can keep this up. They've got to get somebody else, but Tatum has come in here in this start, and when the rest of his team has been struggling, he's really stepped forward. Brian Williams in the lineup for the first time for Tennessee as well. Trying to defend Heitbelt. They're looking to get it to him. He was open, too. Micah Downs just missed him. Yep. There's Pargo. The quick crossover. Bolden. Four on the shot clock. He's got a drive, puts it up with the right hand. Williams, the aforementioned big man, clears the glass. Tatum's open in the corner. Oh, boy, is he ever. There it goes. Oh, chance for a four-pointer. You couldn't get that ball over to them quick enough, could you? You when, saw it from here. When you are hot, you're hot, and everybody should be looking for Cameron Tatum because... He has proven to be hot. You ride that horse until it dies. And right now, that horse is taking you toward the finish line in fine fashion. Cameron Tatum setting his feet and a terrific pass by Josh Tabb. He's a lefty and used that left hand to just push past it into the corner. And Tatum having a little bit too much to say there. He needs to just keep playing because he's playing very well. Cameron Tatum, 14. Gonzaga, 7. Might be time to bring out that Jimmy Patzos triangle in two and put the two on Tatum. <laughs> Chisholm with the rebound. Got it up to Tatum who lost the handle momentarily. 
Well, you might as well let him touch it again if you can get it to him. I think the heat checks over. We know it's hot. Here it goes. That one's partially blocked. And Cargo will take it out of midair, but he stepped on the baseline. Cameron Tatum, all 14 of Tennessee's points. He'll get a chance to uh, cool off the sizzle over there on the bench for a minute. You've got to watch Brian Williams here on the inbounds pass. They like to just throw it up and maybe lob it. Comes out front to Josh Tabb. And Tabb is.